In this video, we're going to talk about how we can simplify expressions that have an improper fractional exponent. Right? So how do we turn that into a radical first and then be able to simplify it? Um, right away, if you remember your power over root, you know that this can be written as the fifth root of 5x to the eighth. Now that's just the rewrite of the exponent, but I want to do better and simplify that radical. So first, we're going to take a look at a more simple, uh, basic example. So square root of 320. Some students like to factor 320 to be able to simplify. And so if we follow that method, say, so, all right, well, this is 32 times 10 pretty clearly. 10 is 2 times 5. 32 is 16 times 2. And then that's 4 times 4. And then you still have times 2 times 2 times Five. And you can go a little further, but we don't need to go any further than that because we see where the doubles are, and we're going to be doing the square root of all of that. And since this is a square root, you can take out all the things that are doubled. All the things that have two of them, you can pull out front because of that two there. And so there's a four out front, there's a two out front, and then you have the square root of what's remaining, which is just five. And so your final answer would be the eight square root of 5 as your simplified version. Now, we've also talked about how you can take that square root of 320 and find your uh, biggest square number in it, because you know that this is a square root, you're looking for those square numbers. And so, this, you can spend a little more time thinking about your factoring and say, well, this is actually 64 times 5. And 64 is 8 squared. So, as we think about this square root, you have 8 squared times 5. Well, that's why you can pull out that 8, or you can say that this square root cancels out that square, those 2 and the 2 there, and that's how come that 8 can be pulled apart. You have the square root of 8 squared times the square root of 5, and so you get 8 squared of 5. Obviously, you get to the same place, but a little bit different method of thinking. And so, same goes for simplifying this radical. You could think about what happens when you do the 8th power of your 5x. And so you could write out all of those 5x's. And this is 8 of them, right? So there are 8 5x's underneath that radical, and it's the 5th root. So if we follow the other work, you say, well, here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here these 5 can be pulled out. And so what we have left are 3, 3 more. And so there's a 5x out front because there were five of them that got the fifth root of. We still have the fifth root of 5x cubed then. And so to simplify, to finish this out, you would actually cube that 5x. So it's the fifth root of 125x cubed there. Right? And so that would be one way to do it. Now, another way to do it would be to think of this improper uh, fraction and think of it as a mixed number. And so you could write this as 5x all to the 1 and 3 fifths, which we almost never do except for this one scenario. Because then this would be 5x to the first times 5x to the 3 fifths if you use your laws of exponents. Well, right there, now I've already got my 5x that was sitting out front, and I've got the third power of that fifth root. And so this 5x is sitting out front. You have to do the uh, fifth, fifth root of 5x to the third, and so you have 5x, fifth root of 125x cubed. Right, so you get to the same place again, but nobody wants to write out all eight of these 5x's, which is why this is the thought process here. And so the mixed number is a much faster way to do it. Why does the mixed number work? Because this is what we're looking for. We're looking for the whole 5 out of 5 um, as a fraction. As we get into a slightly more complicated example still, if you had 3x squared y all to the 5 thirds, then what you would want to do is you'd want to think of this as an improper fraction as well. And so um, now write it as a mixed number. That'd be 3x squared y to the first times 3x squared y to the two-thirds. Right? So there's a two-thirds up there. So rewriting into a radical form, 
3x squared y, and then the cubed root of 3x squared y quantity squared. And we're not done yet because we want to square this stuff out. And what you'll notice is that you have this 3x squared y, and then cubed, and this is a 9x to the fourth y squared inside. And what we look at here is we want to double check and say, well, wait a minute. Since I had these powers that were here earlier, maybe some more things can happen. You can see with that x, that x to the fourth, you could think of that as x to the third times x to the first inside with your 9 and your y squared. It's still the cubed root of all that, and you still have 3x squared y out front. And this x cubed can get pulled out, just like all the other examples that we saw where we can pull out. And so then you have out front, you have 3x squared, another x, and then y, cubed root of 9xy squared, and then to finish, put all that together, 3x cubed y, and then the third root of 9xy squared for your final answer. All right, so several steps there, but thinking of that mixed number, 5 thirds as 1 and 2 thirds can uh, make that process a little bit faster. So hopefully that helped. Good luck.